Rule set. Just the four of you, was it? Three. I am already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. You are? Oh. I would have preferred more test subjects. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. And I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Oh, and one last thing. You might experience a teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Good luck! Thavnir, home to city-state Rats at Han. Rising from the southeast waters of the Bounty, this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos, in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay. For a time. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? What chance? Against such an insidious foe. Seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. There was a note with Kryle's instructions. Don't let Estinian roam the markets alone. <laughs> He's alarmingly bad with coin. Mm -hmm. 
What happened here? Their dress marks them as alchemists. I see no evidence of injury or poison. Thinkest thou they but slumber? I believe so. Whether it is by choice is another question entirely. Oh, we have guests. You must excuse the poor welcome. Long days and longer nights have taken their toll, as you can see. I am Vashan, servant to the Satrap. My task was, in fact, to wake these good men and women, if you will allow. People of the great work, I come bearing new scales. Mm. Scales? We have new scales? Yes, my friends. Gather round. I have them right here. Now I can continue my experiment. Many thanks. One for me. Those are dragon scales. Yes, such materials are vital to their most pressing research. And we are fortunate to have them. Our experiments are so close to bearing fruit. Soon we will have a talisman capable of nullifying the etheric emissions from that accursed tower. D did I say something wrong? Are you not here with Varshan? Wait, who are you people? Of course! You're the one Cryo sent. The warrior of light we've been waiting for. Ah, oh, this is a day of celebration. Praise be to Cinderova! The winds have shifted. I feel it. The end to our toil is near. I feel it too. My head hasn't been this clear in days. Tell me, how did you acquire those scales? Curious that it concerns you so. But worry not. They were freely given by the dragon with whom our satrap has forged a lawful pact. That is well. You must be quite familiar with Dragon King, yes? Is this their congealed blood I see on your weapon? Hmm. Speaking of dragon blood, you yourself have been infused with it, have you not? I should like to draw a file or two, if so. Now, see here. Come along, come along. I must insist that you visit our laboratory. Cease your shoving, or so help me. Oh dear, your poor companion. What with the new scales and your timely arrival, my colleagues are a little giddy with excitement. No harm will come to him, I promise. Meanwhile, shall we find a quiet place to talk? As you may have guessed, I am Nidana, the alchemist who sent a request to your mistress, Kryl. 
We have workshops across the nation collaborating on this research project. But it is here at the great work where I collate our results. Come with me, all of you, and I can explain the crux of the situation. Yes, that would be Raj Adhan. Hardly anyone has been allowed in or out since our troubles with the tower began. The faithful citizens huddle inside the city walls, and commerce has all but ground to a standstill. I pity the satrap, the trials he must be facing. He, he is the most important person in Rajadhan. Long ago, this island was home to two tribes of Matanga, the Gajasura and the Arkasodra. When the Aura came to these shores, it was the Arkasodra with whom they joined forces. Together they defeated the war like Gajasura, forcing them to flee Thavnair altogether. Peace and prosperity reigned for a time, until a clan of Hyor from the mainland decided they wanted the island for themselves. It was a direct ancestor of the present satrap who arbitrated that conflict and welded the warring factions into the nation we know today. And ever since, a member of that esteemed lineage has inherited this somewhat unique position. You see, by and large, the state is run by the people, but when problems arise, it is the satrap who mediates a solution. The stability provided by the satrap is what has allowed Raj Adhan to thrive all these years. And it was the satrap himself who entrusted us with this duty. We will not fail him, nor our countrymen. What is the delay with the vessel? I told you I need to adjust those ratios. I come all this way to admire one of my splendid towers, and what do I find? Fools! attempting to ward off its tempering influence with magic trinkets. I seem to recall a similar experiment in ages past. What was that man's name? Oh, something. Oween? Oh, another, another body, body, another time. Who could be expected to remember every trivial detail? Allowing them to construct such handy talismans would be counterproductive to my plans. And yet, I find myself deathly curious. How will they manage this feat with the limited knowledge and resources at their disposal? <laughs> Complications be damned. For we cannot escape the nature of our souls. And I, as ever, am my own worst enemy.
I see our taskmasters have allowed you a moment's respite as well. You have to hand it to these alchemists. They are determined to see this endeavor of theirs succeed. I've never been one for blind optimism, but I sincerely get the sense they're close to a breakthrough. They had better be, or all this effort was for naught. The peoples of Eorzea, of the Far East, of Thavner, children of this star united in common cause against a dire threat. Yet ere they succumbed to suicidal madness, were not the Telophoroi born of her body as were we? They who cling to life and the promise of the morrow's dawn, against they who desire death and an ending of their own orchestration. The victors of this war alone will hold the right to answer the question of existence, of its meaning, and its worth. Poetic and ominous to a fault. That said, if it's an existential debate in nature, then our arguments might not be as persuasive as you'd think. Van Daniel wants to die and take everyone with him in an orgy of pain and suffering. An utterly vile and unforgivable idea. And yet, when spat upon by fate and wailing in the deepest pit of despair, who among us can say they have not entertained similar thoughts? There are nights black as pitch, bereft of hope, and no words of comfort can reach you. And it's all you can do to grit your teeth and choke back the bile. The more you see and suffer life's injustices, the more difficult they become to bear. Vengeance is nurtured in similar soil. Though your anger has a broader focus, the sentiment is much the same. A fervent desire to destroy others, to see them drown in torment, as you have. That about sums it up. The will to endure is not always as strong as the urge to burn it all down and salt the earth. Survival be damned. It's a struggle, often close and brutal. Indeed. Well... I, for one, shall pray survival proveth more appealing in the end. As will I. Besides, our chances are much improved when we've the company of others committed to the cause of life. Our vengeful dragoon here is proof of that. What is it? What did you see? Van Daniel, are you sure? If he knows we've been working on a countermeasure. It holds. The vessel holds. This is the one. At long last. Look! We have finally created a talisman strong enough to withstand our experiments! We've named it a warding scale for the time being. With this in your possession, your soul should be completely shielded from corruptive ether. Afforded such protection, any one of us may approach the towers without fear. Thou hast mine admiration. It is an invention of historical significance. I thank you for your kind words. But I would prefer you keep them unsaid until we test the talisman's efficacy in the field. It is for the next stage of our plan that we summoned you in the first place. To accompany me to the Tower of Zot. 
should the scale prove effective, as I very much hope it will, then you'll have little to do. But should the effect be weaker than anticipated, I must ask that you restrain me, or knock me senseless. Either way, we are fortunate to have you with us. Nidana, I, I... Are you certain you wish to do this? If others are to trust our creations, then we must have faith in them first. And as the senior researcher, it falls to me to lead by example. But, should I fail to return, then learn what you can from this attempt and apply it to the next. Our work must continue. Is that clear? We'll keep an eye on the place while you're away. Assuming Fandaniel is lurking about, there's no telling what mischief he has in mind for us, or you. Be on your guard. Shall we be on our way? I'll have one of the soldiers at the hatchery prepare us a boat, and we can set out from the northern shore. I'll see you there. We should soon cross the threshold of the tower's influence. Any moment now. It's working! And you? You are still yourself? Then I'd like to see how it fares closer to the tower if we could. So far, so good. The scale's protection appears to be holding. If we can just make it to the tower's entrance. A few more steps. to the sisters we made it and the scale has proven itself to be everything we hoped it would be now we can focus on production once we've equipped and returned with an entire survey team this menace will soon give up its secrets You'll only hurt yourself thrashing about like that. Stop! Oh, you can't do this! Please! A 
little late for heroics, I'm afraid. Hmm. The similarities are striking. My, my! Such hostility! Never before has my artistry so displeased. My patrons of old would have positively squealed in delight. Though, between you and me, I find gushing praise exhausting. Allow me to tell you a story. Surely you've yet to hear the one about Van Daniel, the Sundered Assian. I inherited the position and the soul of the Van Daniel who sat on the convocation in the time of the final days, theoretically speaking. Practically speaking, that fact is of no consequence. I was born and lived as, well, me. Eventually, I was recruited into the Asians and imbued with the former Fan Daniel's knowledge and memories, but I never felt that they were truly a part of who I am. <sighs> How to explain? Perhaps if I told you who I was before my Asian embrace, although that chapter too is a past I've long since discarded. I have it on good authority you've poked your nose into an elegant ruin or two, yes? Then I expect you've heard of me. The old. Um, at your service. Imagine a nation of unbridled prosperity. Every need met, day after day of unbroken, unshakable peace. Existence fulfilled. And ripe for decay. You are a genius without peer, Amon. However do you conceive of such delightful experiments? That fool was beside himself with panic when he awoke with the head of a bull. <laughs> Even his cries for help emerged as so much guttural lowing. Oh, 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 the memory of it. <laughs> My poor sides. My friends and I were so consumed by laughter, we struggled to breathe. No more than entertainment for bored wastrels ignorant of its worth. My all-consuming work. But it was not their only indulgence. For they were ever hungry for stimulation. Slaves to the slightest hint that amusement was afoot. Our nation was ailing, but I would see the poison purged. I resurrected a legend, our first and greatest emperor. And just as I had planned, he set our wayward empire back on the path of conquest. An inexhaustible ambition carried us onwards, always onwards. Yet, he who delivered to us such glory was not to be satisfied. Heed me, Armon. No matter how vast one's empire, 
or full one's treasure vault. All is rendered meaningless by death. In the end, all is lost. You know as well as I that the Emperor stands to lose this war. And so I have come to claim you. For while your methods leave something to be desired, we cannot deny the results of your work. And as fortune would have it, the seat of Van Daniel, your rightful seat, lies vacant and waiting. Take your place amongst your peers, rather than die a pointless death amidst the ashes of your doomed nation. Send one of your clones to the Crystal Tower that you might see for yourself. See what lies ahead. The fall of the Empire affirmed the truth, majestic and tragic as the Emperor foresaw. Scheme as you like, build as you will, nothing endures. What is life but a brief jaunt ending in emptiness? So, so easily, easily distracted. Why, I, I almost, almost left, left without, without saying, saying farewell. farewell. As for As your friend, friend, you need not worry. worry. These, These horns, horns are, are far, far more, more useful, useful to me to alive as fuel, as fuel for the, the primals. primals. Uh, uh, uh. If you, you attempt, attempt to pull, to pull them, free, them free, they, they will, will die. die. So, 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 enjoy, enjoy tackling, tackling that conundrum, conundrum with your, with your comrades. comrades. We, we shall, shall meet, meet again. again. Not in what of these mind spires. Oh, oh no, no. But, but somewhere, somewhere more suitably grandiose. grandiose. Your, your favorite, favorite playmate, playmate is, is ever so eager to see. A vast rock squats upon Favnir, and to its stony surface clings the city of Rods at Khan. Ye who enter here are subject to the scrutiny of gods, the gate's most watchful eye. The orb which beholdeth the truth of all things. Pass beneath its hot and piercing gaze, bearing down like a second midday sun. The fragrant haze, a mixture of sweet incense and acrid smoke. The cries of merchants mingled here with lively melodies accented by dancers' feet. Travelers seduced by vivid sound and colors were once swallowed up by patchwork streets.
But no such scenes to savor now. To what somber present does that divine eye bear witness? Here we are, Megaduta. It seems a shame to bring you here directly. Under normal circumstances, it would have been my pleasure to show you the sights. And it would have been our pleasure to see them. Alas, it seems our tour of the city will have to wait. I'm afraid so. Come, we should head inside. Your Excellency, may I present our honored visitors? Ah, splendid. Most splendid. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ahawan, Satrap of Radzathan. Our alchemists tell me your assistance was invaluable in the creation of the Warding Scale. Such deeds ought to be recognized in person. Thus did I have Young Varshan convey you here forthwith. On behalf of my people, may I express to you our sincere gratitude. I assume you speak of Nedana. A regrettable incident indeed. Her colleagues insist that we honor her wishes and trust in the talisman, that it will be instrumental in saving Nedana and the others. I am eager to hear your opinion on the matter, so let us not stand on ceremony. Come, sit. I think not. This charade has gone on long enough. Show yourself. Forgive me, but were you expecting musicians, perhaps? There are no performers waiting in the wings at present, but arrangements could be made if you'd prefer. Nay, he hath the right of it. The time for artifice is past. Raise the curtain. As you wish. You travel as assistants to the students of Baldessian, but you are known to me. Even here have we heard of the science of the Seventh Dawn. I am Vritra, and for years uncounted have this isle served as my abode. First brood, sibling to Hreisvelga and Nidhogg. I, mine elder brothers, of Midgard son once born, I was last to hatch. Well, isn't this a surprise? We were told Rods at Han had an alliance with a dragon. Not that a great worm sat in the Sartrap's own hall. A necessary subterfuge. 
as the true tale of our nation history illustrates most effectively. In the beginning, the rock upon which our city is built was home to Vitra and Vitra alone. In time, the ancestors of the Matanga came to the island and established a foothold. But never did they dare disturb the worm's lair. Next to arrive with the Aura, adopting the example of their Akasodra allies, they too treated Vitra with reverence and respect. And for many years, an understanding between our forefathers and the Great Worm endured. Until marauding heroes from the mainland came, threatening to shatter our peace and tranquility. When it seemed all would be drowned in blood, Vitra himself came forth and quelled the rising conflict. A peaceful accord was reached, and oaths sworn in Vitra's name. Thus begun the dragon's governance of the fledgling state, which was to grow into Rad's Adhan. But if Ritra is still here, then your position as Sartrap is just... A charade, yes. And one which my family has performed faithfully for generations. Many envy the great worms their power. Were it known that I ruled here, then the fires of war would burn without end. I would not be the flame which consumeth my people. Those few who join me in laying our country's foundations were, perforce, sworn to secrecy. Your eye. It was taken. Tis here, buried within the semblance of flesh. The body before thee is but a simulacrum, constructed by the finest artisans of Razathan. With mine eye nestled within, it doth serve as an inconspicuous vessel for my whim. Ah, that would explain why I felt the presence of a dragon upon our first meeting. I am woven with words fashion to deceive such arcane senses. Though twas short-lived, it seemeth thy fusion with my brother hath left thee much altered. Estinian warm blood. From the very first, we sensed the nature of one another, yet did neither one of us bear his fangs. That is all I need know of thee for now. With my secret thus revealed, I have for you a proposal, not as a worm of the first brood, but as the ruler of Rats and Han. With all haste must we take in hand the finished talismans and reach this foul spire. Thence, should it lay within our power to spell its wicked influence, Yet even with the assurance of the warding scales, the narrow confines of the tower doth limit the size of our force. And thus denied strength in numbers, thou must choose thy soldiers with care. Just so. Yet though our radiant host is formidable, I see a surer path before me.
is upon that strength I will call. The Scions have proven themselves the most capable, and I ask that you serve as the tip of our spear. Talismans would, of course, be provided for each of thy companions. And should you agree to this undertaking, more will be provided to make use of as you see fit. There's no denying it's a dangerous proposition, but the rewards may far outweigh the risk. Just think of what we might accomplish if we could equip all our allies with warding scales. I worry, however, that even the four of us may be too few for what you have in mind. Might we regroup with our friends first to discuss the matter? Tis no trifling task that I have laid before you. Go. Steam your hearts and hone your plans. Such time as you require shall be spent in crafting your protective charms. It seems a quick trip back to Charlian is in order. Will thou not lend thine aid? Whether your request be made as a great worm, or the ruler of Rods at Han, I see no reason to refuse, nor will I. I am in thy debt. Your time in Safnir has certainly been eventful. In my opinion, carrying out Vitra's request and assaulting the Tower of Zot should be our highest priority. I agree. While I still have questions concerning the Forum and their grand undertaking, we have all but exhausted our avenues of investigation. Simply pressing them any harder on the subject will almost certainly result in our expulsion. Therefore, I suggest we explore the Ethereal Sea connection by way of a letter to Master Matoya, then make our way to Thavnair. I wonder, even with the protection these talismans afford us, what can we hope to achieve once inside the tower? According to Orenvold and Fudola's report, they were unable to free the Amolja. Worse, their attempts triggered the tower's defenses, which led to a summoning of Luna Afrit. What does it tell us that the Spires even have such defenses? Simply pulling a prisoner from the wall is fatal, thus the direct approach is doomed to failure from the outset. Any further measures to dissuade such actions seem... unnecessary. Unless, of course, there is a way to free the prisoners without killing them, then it stands to reason that any intruders will be met with overwhelming force. The towers appeared throughout the world in but the twinkling of an eye. Twas by magical means these structures were raised, I surmise. A spire thus conjured must needs be maintained, and I suspect an arcane catalyst, some manner of core, doth lie hidden within. Destroy the core, and the tower ceaseth to be, thus liberating the captives without harm. So we can hope, and I would prefer to enter the tower with a working theory than with no plan at all. Assuming Ishtola's reasoning is correct, the chances of the defenses remaining dormant are small to none. Any primals will have to be dealt with, and defeating one will likely only lead to the summoning of another. Our every victory will only compound the prisoner's suffering. May we not then divide our forces? Those proficient in healing will focus on sustaining the captives. That duty can be covered by Urianger, Kryl, Yostola, and myself. 
The remaining Scions will proceed with the search for the core. Admittedly, this strategy puts both parties at greater risk but it should bolster our chances of saving the Arcosodera by a considerable margin. That she does. But I think Alize herself would assert that she's at her best when she's charging onto the breach. And from what I recall from the Grand Cosmos, there's a spring in her step when she fights by your side. Ye gods, will you never let me hear the end of that? Rest assured that I will do what is asked of me, regardless of who I happen to be standing next to at any given time. It seems we have a plan. All that remains is to carry it out. I will inform Rads at Han of our movements, so let us make our preparations and regroup near the tower. The military post in what's left of the Han Hatchery should serve as a convenient staging point. That sounds perfect. And remember, the experimental etherite at the confluence is there for those who need it, so there's no excuse for being late. Is everyone all right? We fortified the captives with what magics we could. Have the defenses been disabled? All appears quiet for the moment. The lower floors were disturbing enough, but this place feels... wrong. The ether is heavy and thick, like wading through a quagmire. I believe we stand in the tower's beating heart. What sayest thou, Ishtola? I see it. Ether siphoned from the land runs up through the spire, flowing to a single point. This is the core we seek. Yet something is off. As large as this structure is, it siphons far more ether than is required to sustain it. Tis as if the core is feeding on the energy, consuming it. I need to take a closer look. Curious. There is something there embedded inside the core. A man's limb. This is what we came to destroy? Yes, if you'll be so kind.
And that should be the end of it. <sighs> what now? My theory that the tower might come crashing down following the core's destruction doth appear to be correct. Bully for you! And how are we supposed to survive the fall? Below. The floor beneath our very feet dissolves. Brace yourselves! I pray I'm not too late. What happened? Where are we? By my reckoning, we're still on the island where the tower stood, but tis as if it never existed. Hardly a scratch. But how? Graha wove a levitation spell at the last moment. Large enough to catch everyone, it would seem. That explains the lack of obvious injuries. The expenditure of so much ether has taken its toll. He will need plenty of rest, but should otherwise be none the worse for wear. Then the immediate problem is what to do with our new friends here. They'll be much changed for their time in the tower. Even if their bodies are intact, I doubt we could say the same for their minds. Angelo and I will take care of that. I have every faith in you, Alizé, but there are just too many for you to treat alone. We'll send at once to Eorzea for more porxies, and call on the local mages to lend a hand. Hail, Scions! We were watching the tower, when it simply... disappeared. What happened here? The threat is banished, and thy people delivered. They are, however, in need of treatment, and we of a secure locale and helping hands to assist us in its provision. You shall have all this and more. Come, let us convey these unfortunate souls to the city.
Are we the last to arrive? I hope we've not kept you waiting. Not at all. Your comrade is feeling better, I trust. Much better, thank you. Harness remedies are certainly potent in more ways than one. One becomes accustomed to the taste, although I hope you never have cause to do so. Pray, take your ease. Full glad I am to see you all unharmed. Alchemists throughout the land were put to work in the forging of your talismans. The finished ones have been collected, and now await you at the High Crucible of Alchemia. Present this letter when you are ready to take them into your possession. We are humbled by your generosity. Know that the inventive wisdom of Radzat Han will be vital in restoring serenity to our star. Every single one of those scales came from you, didn't they? You must still be in such pain. Tis of no moment. A mere annoyance compared to the dreadful suffering inflicted upon this land and its people. Albeit brief, my involvement in the Dragonsong War afforded me a glimpse of the myriad sorrows which consumed both dragon and man. Though you were half a world away, such tragedies as befell your kin must have affected you deeply. And yet, you chose to live among men. In the age when that conflict first bloomed, my choice had already been made. In some distant place, man slew dragon and dragon slaughtered man. Yet no hate could I muster for those smiling faces which did look to me for guidance. Not even my brother's righteous rage could rally me to his cause. I huddled here, secret and still, hoping against hope that which I had built would remain untouched by the chaos and carnage. It would seem we share the same desire for peace, Great Vritra. To that end, I wonder if we might trouble you with another question. The Telophoroi are intent on recreating the final days, an apocalyptic event which we know to predate the sundering of the star. As the longest lived among us, know you aught of this terrible cataclysm. Nay, when war and strife drove my sire from his home, he crossed the great expanse with only our unhatched eggs as company. He alighted upon a shattered source, 
its thirteen reflections long since scattered beyond the rift. Of events preceding his arrival, he knoweth not, save that which Hydradin hath deigned to disclose. I see. So again, tis the inscrutable Hydalin to whom we must look for answers. Seek you to divine the will of this star. If so, I have a tale which may afford you some small comfort. Tis a story from my youth. Many, many years ago. To my sire, I once posed the question, Of all the stars in the sky, why didst thou settle upon this one? To which Midgard Summer did reply, T'was the last bastion of hope. He believed, so long as Hagelin endured, so too might dragonkind. Solemn and portentous were his words. What deeper meaning they held, I could not, dared not pursue. Tis a stone I've left unturned ever since. Yet take you solace in the knowledge that whatsoever Hydralin does strive towards, Tis an ideal which hath earned my sire's conviction. Thank you, Vritra. You've given us warm reassurance in a world gripped by cold uncertainty. While I'm sure we all have a great many questions, I think it's time we collect the talismans and be on our way. Our fight against the Telophoroi is far from finished. We must take our leave, but please do inform us if we can provide any further assistance. Privy. There is one whom my sire hath judged worthy of honor and respect. The one known to men as Aorzea's champion. This hero of renown and rumor, tis thee. his clash with the Maker, and the long slumber which was his price. Yet even closed in sleep, my father's eyes are far from blind. He is watching over thee, watching over this world. T'was a revelation most pleasing that thou, a child of man, had gained Midgard Summer's trust, but alongside my narration runneth a rivulet of dread. For upon thy life's reel wind too many threads of fate, power, wheel enmeshed with woe. Amidst this tangled knot thou shalt know no rest. Tis an endless confluence of forces. A struggle without a cease. More terrible still is the attrition wrought upon thy companions, as they are swept up in the storm of thine existence.
out and protect them well. They will be your strength and your salvation. The hope thou wilt need come the end. Even cowering behind my curtain, I know the suffering of the powerful. I have watched my siblings driven mad by loss. Thus do I exhort thee to spare no effort to keep thy loved ones safe. Ah, apologies. We hadn't meant to interrupt. It's just that we do have a history of suddenly collapsing, and when you didn't follow us out... Tis I who must apologize. I have to change your champion over long with idle chatter. Go. At war's end, I pray I welcome thee back into my hall, where together with thy joyful comrades, you may toast your triumph. These are the talismans we were promised. Yes, and I made a quick count. There are far more than we could have hoped for. Enough to outfit an entire company of soldiers, in fact. Considering the involved process, that they were able to manufacture so many in such a short span of time is nothing short of a miracle. Once we have distributed them to our allies in Eorzea and the Far East, we'll have a fighting chance to bring down the other spires just as we did with the Tower of Zot. Or we could use them to invade Garlemald proper and strike directly at the Telophoroi's base of operations. Of course, we would need to consult with various Alliance leaders before such a drastic measure could even be contemplated. To which end, I could set out forthwith and present the idea to each of our allies in person. Pray allow me to undertake some few of those journeys. I find myself restless and in need of purposeful duties. I can head eastward. Bosnia and Dalmasca are just a short hop from here. And Doma's Shinobi network should come in handy for passing on the word. We shall share the burden then. Meanwhile, I think it best that you and the others take the talismans back to the Baldessian Annex. We must keep them safe and secure until we've decided upon a course of action. Please, I must speak with you. Nidana? You're awake. Yes. When I spoke with the carer at my bedside, she told me that one of the scions, a young woman, had cleansed me of the Tao's corruption. It seems I've been asleep ever since the treatment. But when I awoke and learned you were all still here, I knew I had to come. As you said, Nidana was captured only recently. Such a brief exposure is swiftly cured, so I tended to her before we gathered at Megaduta. And I am truly grateful that you did. I cannot thank you enough. All of you, for everything you've done. Destroying the tower, rescuing our people. You've saved Havnir from an awful fate.
Yet who hath truly saved whom? Due in no small part to thine inspirational courage, the alchemists were successful in reproducing warding scales of proven efficacy. Replications of thy work now stand ready to travel across the seas unto the hands of those who might wield them against this rising evil. The talisman? Is this true? I was so groggy from sleep, I didn't even think to ask. Oh, our great work sent across the seas. It was worth it. Oh, it was all worth it. is completely changed. What do you have there? How unusual. I wonder if the effect is a reaction to Akasha. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that term. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Harnish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feelings. You imply that it is distinct from ether. Our foreign scholars often conflate the two, but we see them as separate concepts. Ether is an energy which permeates the land. It exists within animals, objects, even the air we breathe, affecting all through which it flows. Akasha, on the other hand, exists in a domain beyond our reach, a gift bestowed from on high or torn from the heavens in some traditions. Akasha can neither be created nor destroyed. It is beyond our power to purposefully alter or manipulate. The only thing observed to influence it is an abundance of, I want to say, spiritual emotion. As a veteran of the battlefield, surely you've experienced moments of desperation or exaltation when you've transcended the usual limits of your capabilities. That is a manifestation of Akasha, the invisible essence harnessed by heart, mind, and unyielding spirit. I really must hear more about this theory. Our disciplines are based entirely upon the idea that ether is the fundamental form of all energy. I'm glad my haphazard explanation has piqued your interest. But even for us, Akasha is a somewhat abstract field of study. A lack of practical application lends itself poorly to formalized research. Which is why my analysis of your flower can amount to little more than idle speculation. I am sorry. Nonsense! You have nothing to be sorry for. Your insight is much appreciated. Shall we depart for Charlian then? I will see to it that the talismans arrive at the Annex. And we will be in touch once our talks are concluded. I suggest you rest while you can. From here onward, sleep is bound to be in short supply.
Take heart and protect them well. Good, you're here. You haven't eaten yet, have you? We've bought quite a spread if you're interested. Only the finest dining from the last stand. Lest you wonder, we invited Astinian as well. But he refused with a rather grim-faced, No, thank you. I suspect Charlian cuisine is not to his liking. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Perhaps our lone wolf just needed some time apart. What? To perfect his brooding stare? Next time, I'll drag him out by the ear, sit him down in front of a Charlian feast, and see that he eats every last bite. An excellent idea. Of all people, warriors must take proper meals and rest, if they are to maintain a healthy constitution. Poor Astinian, beset on all sides. Speaking of one's physical condition, Mistress Quile, I hear you've recently played literal host to Heidelin herself. Ah, <sighs> and what an experience that was. Tiring, yes, but no lasting harm done. <sighs> if anything, I should have liked to speak with her longer. I've not felt a hint of her presence since. Heidelin instructed you to carry that flower, yes? Twill be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. And then something about seeking joy in darkness, was it? Come to think of it, isn't that what happened with Nidana back in Radzat Han? Hmm. The flower did seem to radiate a joyful glow, as if reflecting the elation we all felt. The relief of a people with renewed hope. Indeed, and in turn I felt buoyed by that radiance. It was akin to spotting a beacon and knowing we were on the right path. I know we've not yet triumphed over the Tlophoroi or learned the full breadth of the Forum's plans. But even within the midst of our struggles, we find small moments of joy to sustain us. Rare and hard won perhaps, but it is this pursuit of happiness that gives us the strength to carry on day after day. That's mine. To the swift the spoils. Though I recall that levitation spell of yours was quick enough. Mm, only barely. And even at my best, I'm still too slow to wield it effectively in battle. Mayhap I simply require more practice with this new magic. You unearthed it from the depths of Numenon, I presume? Aye, and from a veritable mountain of arcane tomes at that. Twas necessary to facilitate my solitary explorations. Or 
To put it simply, you used it to sneak around the Forbidden Archives. I... Uh, yes. Well, after a fashion. Shelves. They're too tall for me. And I could hardly move the library's platforms without attracting attention now, could I? Oh. oh. Did you think we were here? <laughs> Surrender to thy fate, O oh champion. Enjoying the bracing cold, I see. Do you not own a warm coat or a cloak? Something in fur? Or fashioned from the skins of your enemies? Or... Well, never mind that. I come to you once more as the bearer of bad news. Our tower in Thavnir has been toppled. And I need not tell you by whom. Given how many we have at our disposal, the loss of a single spire is hardly fatal to our plans. It does, however, slow the rate at which we siphon ether. If they continue to preoccupy themselves with the towers, then all will be well. But should our foe prove bold enough to strike at us here, then the timing becomes... questionable. Our foe is bold enough. Of that, I can assure you. Ah, uh, yes. Very well, then. I suppose I must prepare a proper welcome. Honestly, talk of your nemesis is the only thing you seem to enjoy. Does nothing else spark your interest? Hmm. No. All else is... equal. Equally tedious. Equally disappointing. The world is a tepid bog into which we sink, too weak to thrash as the mud clings to our eyes and fills our throats till we blissfully choke. But then came the light, blinding and pure and hot, so very hot, enough to set my soul aflame. I basked in the afterglow until the void yawned once more. And then I knew the muck would never claim me again. There was naught for me ahead, so I drew the curtain on all that had come before. Burn, let the whole star burn. 
I will have my contest. I will reclaim my moment. How wonderful that the emptiness of death has not dissuaded you from committing your life to its pursuit once more. I don't know whether to envy you or pity you. You question my disinterest, but what of yours? Despite your noisome antics, I sense you take little pleasure in this endeavor. Mercy, my lord. Such pointed barbs from one who barely acknowledges my existence. Nevertheless, you are mistaken. For I do find this part somewhat enjoyable. You see, when I was mortal, I would always have the same dream. It was a fragmented thing. Disjointed. All the faces incomplete. The setting, too, was unknown to me, so I thought it simply a fantasy of my sleeping mind. Until one day, I realized it was showing me the truth. Much as your dream of the final days enlightened you. And soon, very soon, the rest of the world will see the truth of my dream, too. Yes, I think that is something we can both enjoy. <laughs>